have wended our way to this room, to this place, through a whole bunch of struggles, through a whole bunch of histories, some of them linked, some of them not so linked. And part of the practice, or part of where we want to get to this evening, is by talking about how we can in fact link struggles, what solidarity really means at this moment, at this moment, when so many communities are under siege. You know, we've come this evening, as I said, through different histories, and as Audrey would say, knowing that we were never meant to survive. Find some particular thing that your soul craves and nourish it, and give it nourishment, Audrey urges us. Audrey has brought us here this evening, embracing an expansive transnational intersectional vision way before we had the vocabulary to speak it. She has brought us here. We have brought ourselves here this evening. Welcome. Welcome. civil servant working for the Dutch government, um, I had to go to a meeting in Rotterdam and I had to some time to kill before that meeting started. And uh, the women's bookstore was right next to City Hall in Rotterdam. And I went in and went to look through the stacks. I came across this book, Sami, which looked uh, really attractive. It was purple with all kinds of uh, clouds on the cover and I decided uh, to buy that book, especially when I looked at the back cover. I was blown away by it. It was the f first book by a black lesbian that I read and there were so many points of recognition in it that I wanted to share it with all my black friends. Anyway, when I read the book, I wrote a letter to Audrey in New York, care of Kitchen Table Press, because I'd heard that she would come to Berlin in uh, 84, and I invited her to visit us. And uh, so she came, and uh, she came twice, actually. She came in the summer of 84, and again in the summer of 86. And later she would tell us that when she had received our letter, um, uh, that she would call all her uh, girlfriends and tell them that of all places there were black dykes in Amsterdam. <laughs> so she was as elated with us as we were with her. <laughs> so um, she bequeathed to us a way of thinking that is analytical but that is also very much part of a daily practice mm -hmm. and that consists of uh, applying intersectionality and transnationality. The fact that we can now talk about a phenomenon uh, called Black Europe, I think we very directly and indirectly uh, need to thank her for that. Because this putting together of Black and Europe was an oxymoron for the longest time. Europe was white. Europe was constructed as white, so that now that there are projects that investigate what it means to have a notion of black Europe, what it consists of, how different the black populations in different European nations are, and I'm part of such a project that is making an Afro-European encyclopedia that is already online, I think, you know, is very much to be connected with Audrey. In creating a sense of community among black people in Germany, I think her presence in Germany, in Berlin, actually was a milestone here, as we have seen um, uh, in the film. Um, she, uh, as we heard, she uh, initiated uh, the first um, uh, anthology of black women writers uh, showing our colors. We, heard, we uh, learned something about the newspaper Africade in the film. Uh, my personal experiences uh, with all the uh, work that in, in this context, 
uh, that she convinced me, and we all know, or they could convince people uh, to be the director of the um, uh, Black Women's Cross Cultural Institute in Germany in 1992, that took place for three weeks in three major cities in, in Germany with black women and women of color from all over the world. And uh, when, when Audrey um, got that idea um, across to me, I said, you can't be serious. Um, but uh, she just said, yes, I am. And um, the, uh, the institute in Germany uh, really was a great uh, success uh, we had here. Audrey Lord's legacy has been about just the right to speak and the, taking up that ownership space. I work with women on a daily basis that have experienced many different forms of violence, be it family violence, state violence, and community violence. And oftentimes, they've been told since a young age, I have been told from a young age, that I don't have the right to say that someone's hurt me. And reading Audre Lorde as a young woman, reading Audre Lorde now, and I know I'm still young, <laughs> um, it was a breath, it was like the breath came into my body. It was a moment to recognize that my voice mattered, that, that my sister's voices mattered, that other women's voices mattered. And recently I was in a group of women, we do a poetry group I work with, uh, and we were reading actually a litany for survival. And the piece where she talks about um, that we have to, it's better to speak. And a lot of us just sat with that piece because there's so much fear about speaking. And I feel that that's Audre Lorde's legacy for me, a big part of her legacy for me, is around just our taking up space and using our voice and saying things that may be hard for our community to hear, hard for our family to hear, hard for our friends to hear, but making sure that we honor our voice. I urge you to you know, lift your head up once in a while from your Blackberries and your iPods and look, you know, look around in your community, see what's happening, come out of the study halls because we need you to go out there and move and shape things. You know, as Audrey said, you know, we had to do our work so that you can do your work. We will still be with you to help you with your work because we stand on each other's shoulders and we're not gonna leave anybody behind, but I really, really urge you to think about that. Organize yourself, you know, march down to the police station. Every time something happens to one of our young black people, they keep saying that it's the gangs, it's inside the community, but I think it's much, much bigger than that. And I, I know that you know that it's much bigger than that. So I look forward to seeing you guys down at college and young in front of the police station. I remember going down there a long time ago, you know, working around racist police violence with a whole bunch of other communities and things got a little better, and so we, so we let it go. But these things are happening again. Um, and just remember, as black people and people of color, what Audrey says, we weren't meant to survive. So, but we are not only meant to survive, but we are also meant to thrive. We talked about survival on this panel. Indigenous people understand survival really well. We can do that. I, I want my people to live. I want them to thrive. I, I want them to be able to be who they are. So I come to you today with honesty to say that we need non-Indigenous Canadians to join with us. And if you believe in social justice and just basic human rights for everybody, please have these discussions with us. We are open to that. And I can say that I will stand with anybody who believes in those same things. Thank you so much.